God and our Father, we humble bow before you this act this morning. We give you praise and honor as the God who given and the one who has taken away. We lift you up this morning because you are our God. And you understand what is happening here today. You understand what life is all about and what it is to lose a loved one. As we have come in your presence to do a thanksgiving service for this young man, only 21 years old, we pray that you will minister to us as we come. We pray that for those, the younger generation who are present, that you will allow them to know that you are God. You still sit on the throne. You are still in charge. And God, you care about them. I pray that you will bless the service in a very special way. And I pray that when we shall have come to the end, someone will recognize that you are God and you are God alone. May you bless every aspect of the service, everyone who shall give their tribute in song or in word. I pray that it will be a thus, that it will minister to our spirits, and it will help us to be better people. Thank you so much for hearing us today. In the name of Jesus, amen. You may be seated. I just want to welcome you as you have taken time out to identify with family members who are now grieving the loss of a loved one. We trust that you will recognize that God is in control. And whatever he does is always his timing. And today as we come, we just want to be at our very best. I want us to be very, very orderly, meaning that we respect our brother and young son who have departed in this life so that all that will be said and done will be done to God's highest honor and glory. On behalf of the Church of God in Jamaica, Primaris River, I extend to you a very, very sympathizing and a kind of human word to tell you now, because we know where you are coming from. As community members, we know where you are coming from, your family, but under God, we know that the God who is God and will be God promised never to leave us nor forsake us. The Bible said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Let me trust that you will find comfort in God's abiding presence. We will continue our program and very orderly. You will go by how I am going to ask that you do. We are going to use this program who am I going to be in charge of the items or selection or whatever you will be using this podium. So now I'm going to ask that we do the first lesson and that is Revelation chapter 21, 4 to 7, Miss Jacqueline Johnson, family friend. <laughs> And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, sorrow, neither crying, neither shall there be any more thing, for the former things are passed away. Fine. And they, and he that sat upon the throne, behold, I made all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for these words are true, true and faithful. And he, said upon, and he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is part of the first of the fountain of the water of life free. So when I last, he that overcome shall inherit all things and will be in his blood and he shall be my son. This is the reason I am the Lord.
last is three, seven to eleven, I suppose. It's higher in more than common. You will come in this order and then I'm seeing a selection. However, our brother Karim Bulka is unable to be there. So I suppose it will be the slot will be fifteen by some other name here, but I suppose. Then come your remembrance. So please come in this order. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 to 11 and it reads to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the sun sorry under the heaven a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted a time to kill and a time to heal a time to break down and a time to build up a time to weep and a time to laugh a time to mourn and a time to dance a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing a time to get and a time to lose a time to keep and a time to cast away a time to rend and a time to sow a time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. What profit have he that worketh in that very me laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. In the last, he hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in their heart, so that no man can find out the work that God made him from the beginning to the end. Here in the reading of God's holy word, on our next day. Here's the selection now. Somebody will be taking it for the cards. What's in me? What's in me? What's in
My brothers and sisters, life is uncertain, but death is sure. And in the midst of life, there's death. I'm here today to express condolences on behalf of my family to the members of the real family. Although I haven't seen her, they are spotted. But how can one among dear so much? It was recently we had gathered at another place to say farewell to another of her sons who had been snatched away from us by the cruel hands of death. Family members, we serve an awesome God, a God who will not give us more than we can bear. Even when we allow the even to pass through in the valley of the shadow of death, He gives us the strength to hold on. Family members, I know that it has not been easy for you. And for time to come, it's not going to be easy because memories will linger on. But I'm happy to assure you that you have a lot of family members and friends who have been praying for you and who will continue to pray for you so that in these challenging times, the God whom we serve will continue to give us the strength to hold on. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. For you, Shana, family members, I know that it is night now. But praise God, the morning is fast approaching. And in the morning, it will be joy. So as you mourn today, I want to assure you that my family and I share with you in your sorrows. Not long from now as you cry, one day the God whom we serve will wipe away all tears from our eyes. And there will be no more sorrows no more death, but it's going to be peace and joy for more. So by faith, we look forward for that day. But until then, my brothers and sisters, when I have long as we live, we continue to face the cruel enemy known as death. But thank God, there is going to come a time when death will be no more. So once more, as you more, I assure you that my family and I share it with you. Thank you very much. God bless you.
crowd managed to find its way inside of the house. And he spotted the crab, caught it, and put it in a pot. And addressing the crab, he said, Crab, you know what me name? And me name Niamatan, and me have a name your morning. Realizing his fate, the crab made a swift early morning escape, much to John's disappointment. And despite all the heavy stones he packed on the top of the lid. John and his cousins were notorious at family gatherings. And on these funerals, when they were about seven years old, Jana and his cousin Vasily and Nache were first in line for the food. But the server announced that they, they were to serve the persons that lived the furthest away first. Jana looked at the lady and said, Yes, Mr. Far, we have come from. Run the food. As skinny as he was, he was well fed and enjoyed what he liked to eat. He would, he would pass by Mama's, Mama Ivy's house and would step out what was cooking and put in his request for dinner to be left for him. In as much as he loved food, he was very selective, not eating from just anybody and not eating everything. When he was in hospital, an antikisha suggested mashed potato as quick nourishment. He responded, "Why, auntie, when I go to him, she would quickly rethink of another nourishing alternative." When the doctors ran wide and instructed no food, Jana stopped talking from that point. Well vexed, as the doctor said, "Food again." Jana was lively again. Talking and smiling. He would call Shana and send in the food order for shrimp, for shrimp fried rice, and whatever was on his mind. When he was a child, he did not like dark food, dark cake, or dark skinned people, except for Granny Peggy, of course. When everybody was eating Oreo, he would have butter kiss biscuits. He claimed that his auntie Keisha carried him from England to Jamaica in a suitcase. So she needs to come and take him back. Shana had to explain to him that he is black, just as just a different shade. This part quickly changed as he grew to love dark-skinned girls and food. He was loving and tender, especially to the women in his life and family. He would sneak up behind you and hug you, kiss off a cheek, laugh, and then run away. He was gentle and loving to his little nieces and cousins. After his last discharge and he came home in September, he had his nieces around him and they would not leave him alone. John and Jordy would be on his back while he, would, he was peacefully drinking his soup, rubbing, Jamaria and Jordan were his profile picture on his WhatsApp and he would video call him from the hospital to see them. He would be seen with his mother, Sharna, Jana, to go to Percival every morning to help her with the pigs in the last year. He would stay by her when Damien was away. He was never far from his mother as he was very protective. Whatever he could do to help her, he would. He would walk with her as if walk with her if it was night. And if she needed to get a taxi to go, she would he would wait until she gets a drive. We have many fun memories and stories of him, being his particularly stubborn self. When he was little, he would fight Jamar to sleep with Granny Peggy. Shana had to wait until he fell asleep and take him back to his bed. Another that comes to mind was when he was at Georgia's Sweet 16 party. He was about four years old at the time. They went to a villa in Montego Bay for this party. When it was bedtime, he would not stop crying as his pillow was left home. He ended up sleeping on Roxanne's boobs as he would not touch her, touch their strange pillow. One day, Jana and Prince were at Granny Peggy's bed. They would be heard talking 
when all of a sudden they went quiet. Granny Peggy could smell smoke, only to realize John had a light that set him the sheep on fire. He was, his mischief was ever present. He would seek out what certain people's nickname were and tease them and then run away escaping the beans. The next day he would come back and smile and say hi as if he didn't trouble you the day before. He loved to do road with his friends. He was popular and got a lot of telling off about walking up and down. He would be dressed in a t-shirt and make a swift exit avoiding his chores. Jana was fashionable and liked to dress up and pose. When his auntie Vicky was getting married, as a groomsman, he had to examine the fashion as he said he wanted to look ready. Christmas was his favorite time of the year. He and his friends would dress up and he would collect Christmas money and touch the road for Grand Market night. On Christmas morning, he would be front and center with his brother-in-law, Arvin, preparing food, head cook, and bottle washer. John will be remembered for the love and kindness he brought with him. Our gatherings, our outings, they will never be the same. He and Jamar brought fun and laughter to the party. His memory will live on in our hearts always. We will speak of him with a fun smile and a tear as he is truly irreplaceable. We know he's flying high and the ages and his brother Jamar. Rest now, Jamar. We love and we miss you.
but thank you that you are God from the beginning on to the end. And God, you know that it's not your very pleasant time at this time, but God, you said in everything we are to give thanks. Here we have collected a portion, Lord, of what you have blessed us with. We ask God that we be produce wisely here on earth for the furtherance of your world. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I am now seeing tributes from his Christian Morgan cousin come as we are called, then Miss Moore Walker, then some Mr. Sandy Morgan. Then after that, we will have Pastor Clyde Turner who will appreciate from that. And a mark of respect, I just want to acknowledge and Pastor Bernard. I don't remember the first name from the Miracle Universe Center of Mark. We are happy to have you all here. And you just uh musician was very said already. Then as an old life can I talk. So anyhow, you know me very well. Alright. So at this time you will go by that now. Song Miss Crystal Morgan cousin, followed by Simone Walker friend. Then a song by Mr. Cassandra Morgan cousin. Then you will see Father the turn take his time. Thank you.
is put in on behalf of Samantha Ramsey, his sister. They say that someone is never truly gone until you stop remembering them. I think there is truth to this. When you left this earth, a great part of us went missing. But you think you left some of this stuff behind for us to find. When you left this earth, we gathered their things and held them close. We closed our eyes and for a moment, it felt like we were here with us again. When you left this earth, we went through your pictures and studied your face harder than ever. And for a moment, those pictures brought you back to life once again. When you left this earth, we found as many reasons as we could to talk about you. We tell stories about you, and for a moment, we are living in those moments and memories again. Every day we find as many reasons as we can to remember you. We find as many reasons as we can to, to not let the rest of you leave this earth. And every day it brings us peace to know that as long as we remember you, Part of us will always, part of you will always be here. If you give a little more than you take, and if you try to fix more than You're the kind who takes the time to have a stranger in the rain. There's a place for people like you. If you stand up for those out on their knees, and lend a voice to those who cannot speak.
us thus far, friends and family, platform party, all protocols observed. As we proceed with this morning's Thanksgiving service, we are mindful of this solemn time, a time of people's soul and great regret. We will try our best to comfort each other, be prayerful and be considerate of the sensitivity of this particular occasion. And at this time, as we move forward, I understand Miss Benil Tulsi and company, are you ready to present your tribute? Thank you very much. Make tribute is on behalf of the friends of Jonathan. The beauty of life is not in its permanence, but in the memories we create, the laughter we share, and the bonds we forge. Today, as we stand here, our hearts are heavy with grief, but also brimming with gratitude for having had Jonathan as a friend. A bond that was built from a young age. Vivid in our memories are the days we used to stroll around in the community without a care in the world, playing football, going to the river, and just having a grand time as friends. The boys of the group would always be up to something around the community, and as boys, they were a little rough sometimes. Once, Tristan got a four-wheel bike, and as kids, they all wanted to try it at once. One day, about six of the boys went on the four-wheel bike, riding around the community. While on the bike, they couldn't maneuver it, and when coming around the corner, the bike hit Echo off his bicycle, and Jonathan flew off the bike and hit the fence. Echo started to cuss him up. All of them were the the bike. The boys would also play cards sometimes. One time, they were playing a game called Burns. For those who don't know, Burns is a game where you call the color of the card and that dictates the amount of hits you get on your hand. Shaheem and Tristan set up the card so that Jonathan would give Brandon about 20 hits on his hand. Brandon didn't want it and ran away. Jonathan ran after him and when he couldn't catch him, it was a stone. Brandon ran into his house and the stone hit the wall of the house. Brandon's father, Paul, came out and called, Jonathan! And Jonathan's father, yes, Bolo? <laughs> and Bolo for But tutus, all of them were playing the same thing again. We cannot forget all the nicknames Jonathan had for us. One in particular is my nickname. He said, my name is Quarter, because how you mama, you can prepare a quarter for the song. The name was Chamberlain and got pregnant, and for the first time he saw him have his baby, and he came to us and he laughed and he told his head, and he said, Quarter, you know you have a quarter for the song. We give a half pound. The sudden departure has not, has not only left a void, but also a silence that is deafening. But in the midst of this grief, we will continue to remember the memories we share. Heaven was needing of a hero, and God chose you. Bless the world our brother, and enjoy your time among the angels. As long as you are until then, we carry you in our hearts, cherishing every moment we share.
here in a moment, moment to see young people show tribute and respect of this man too. Truly we can say this young man was fed into greatness in life. By the respect and the honor that has been displayed today, we thank God that he lived a life that showed decency. As we move on, I understand even the funeral home as an item they like to present on his behalf. Are they ready for their tribute?
we talk about you still. You have never been forgotten, and you will never be forgotten. We hold you close within our hearts, and dare you and your women to walk and guide us through our lives until we meet again.
you will never get used to. So. You are family members, tears is a language. God understands. Cheer up, my brothers, cheer up, my sisters. One of these days, you will understand it all by and by. For the next few minutes, I want you to look with me. Let me greet Bishop Barnett, and my God, you were. Um, Deacon Tulsi, the Gospel Church of God, oh, musicians, very family, brothers, sisters, greetings. Turn with me to John chapter 14, 1 to 3. He says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, and appear, and trust Him, and rely on God. Believe and appear, and trust and rely also in Him. In my father's house are many many places. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going to prepare. I am going, I am going to prepare to prepare a place for you. Verse 3. And when I go and make ready a place for you, I will come back again and will take you to myself. But where I am, you will be. Also, my brothers and sisters, as we look at the portion before us, Jesus calls us to focus on his peace, his place, his promises, and his plans. But for this moment, I just want to look at his peace and his place. So in the 14th chapter of the Gospel of John, we catch a glimpse of what the disciples were experiencing as they began to realize that Jesus would not be with them much longer. And may I submit to you this afternoon, my brothers and sisters, family members, in particular. As I said in the opening, cry if you have to, holler if you have to, bow if you have to, because tears is a language to understand. And you might be wondering. But when somebody is crying you, you know you may not hear but you will see the tears. When somebody is hollering you, they stay a distance from here. But when they are really bawling, then you can stay miles and miles away and hear. So if you want to do any of these three this afternoon, it is, it is, it is important that you let it out. Because God understands. So the disciples they were upset and so Jesus has to get up to really have a hard to talk with them. Do not let your heart be upset. Don't let your heart be troubled. You see the tense here means to stop letting your heart be troubled, indicating that they were falling apart. Oh, can you imagine the mother's grief and all the family members here this afternoon? The grief becomes so intense that the heart
Miss Crystal Morgan again, and she will be doing the eulogy. Job said, he came into this world to pick the way. We as Christians understand that is true, but because we're believers, we'll be covered by the blood, accepted by the blood. So even though we came naked, we lead by the blood. And that invitation is to everyone that desires to leave covered by his love and his blood. Miss Mark, please.
John Alex School and to Paul Plumbing as his skill of choice. Donna and Jamar worked with their brother-in-law, Aubin, on the eastern side of the island as plumbers, and occasionally, Donna would try his hand at the jackhammer. They worked together as a team for four years. They enjoyed their time together and would all return to the West most weekends just to recharge and to be with family. Donna had plans for the hotel industry and wanted to embark on something new after all they migrated in 2022. As a son and grandson, Jonah was shown as a right-hand man, and even though he would dodge housework with Granny Peggy, when she really needed him, he was there for her. He was the one who one year when she was unwell, he cooked Christmas dinner for Granny Peggy and just waited to get feedback on how it tasted. As a brother, Jonah was helpful and reliable when needed. He was the to go for his sister Jane. She would call him saying, Jonah, go shop now. Jonah, go feed the baby. Even when he was fussing about being bossed about, he would still do it. He was the official food lotioner for Jay as she bathed and dressed and he looked well well ready. He was also the mischievous brother. He would pass by and pinch his siblings on the cheek, knowing full well they would cuss. He would find any reason just to provoke, laugh, and then run away. As a nephew, you could always count on John to be the first one ready when Auntie Keisha comes and it was beach time. He was again first in line for his favorite, KFC. He was always loving, looking through pictures. You would find him posing and hugging and kissing his aunts. He was his uncle's favorite too. He threatened his uncle Billy, joking to say, look how I'm going to take with you. With that, he kneeled before her, took her left hand, and said, will you marry me? <laughs> Everybody there that evening busted out laughing. He was just a classical comedian. As a cousin, he had a good relationship with his fellow cousins, and he was the one to bring the fun and laughter. He was kind and supportive, and if a helping hand was needed, he was there. When Andre, aka Tony, took sick, he was there to belt his trousers on and help to lift him and put him inside the taxi to take him to the hospital. Unaware that days later, he too would be taken ill on the same ward as him. As his friend, if you are in need, he would not leave you out. He would take you home to Granny Peggy's house for dinner or place to stay. Whatever way he could, he would help. The only time he was serious was when he was putting in a request for a friend, asking, can he rest here until he's back on his feet again, Granny? As a boyfriend, these same traits were exhibited to his then girlfriend, and he would slowly ease his girl into the family. On July 1st, the day Jamar was married, John took ill. Jamar's passing took a toll on us all, but it hit John a painfully hard. He was unable to sit inside the church for the funeral. He told his auntie Keisha he could not manage it and that he would stand outside. He would not say much about Jamar, only repeatedly saying, Bro, why do you me? Jonah's heart was broken. He contracted pneumonia spiraled into sepsis, which damaged his heart. This led to multiple hospital admissions at Sam and then UWI. He endured a series of unfortunate events, including a blood clot to the lungs and finally COVID. Jonah's heart failed rapidly, and despite all that was done, including a heart valve repair, it would never be he knew exactly what was happening, and he was ready to go. 
He has been telling us since the start of October that he has had enough and he wanted to go. But as a family, we were not here. We encouraged him. We prayed for him. We told him off. Not even food or conversation interested him at that point. He wanted to be with Jamar. He knew what he had to do for his soul as a believer. And he sat in quiet, in very quiet thought, making himself ready, as terrified as he was. He kissed Shauna goodbye, and she wished him well at the theatre door on the morning of October 23, 2023. With Shauna faithfully by his side, and his sister Jane on the phone, he said goodbye. He went with all our love and well wishes to eternity on that day. As short as his life was, he brought us so much joy and we thanked him. Donna and Jamar were a source of fun and laughter in our lives. Life's conversations and celebrations will never be the same. The lights in our home will be dim forever without their shining. We want to thank the three Malibu community members, friends, family, well wishers from near and far, for all the kindness and all the support we've extended towards Shauna, Donna, and the family during his months of illness. Bye, bye, May the Lord welcome you in his arms where you will find eternal rest. Until we meet again, rest well. May his soul rest in
trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Just to rest upon his promise. Just to go with God said the Lord. Father, we are standing in proxy on behalf of this family. A family who has suffered hurt a few months ago. And this is a second blow to them. Jesus, you walk this earth. Jesus, you knew what it is to feel the pain and pangs of death. You experienced it when your friend Lazarus died. And the Bible said that you wept. You wept because of the pain. You wept because of the grief and the sorrow that you were involved in. And Father, this reminds us of what this family is experiencing at this time. But you have commissioned us in your word. You said we should cast all our cares upon you. Thank God because you care for us. I'm happy that you are not a God who is just out there. You are not a God who cannot respond. You are a God who can be touched with the feelings of all infirmities. And we know that our desire strives, we are going to be healed. I pray that you will become a very close friend, a closer friend to this family. I pray that you will be a fence around them. I pray that you will comfort them, oh God, when it hurts most. I pray that you will be there for them because you told us that even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we should fear no evil because you are with us. Thank you for being there. Thank you for being by our side. Thank you for supporting this family. And I know that your work will continue. I pray right now, in the name of Jesus, that if there is anybody in this family who do not know you as Lord and Savior, this is a good time for someone to surrender to your Lordship. Because we know that when you are in the vessel, you promise that you will smile at every storm. Thank you for being there. I pray especially for Sean. This afternoon, my heart reached out to her. My spirit is supporting her. God, you understand and you know. I pray that the peace that passes all understanding, oh God, will rest upon her. I pray that when darker days come, you will be the light that will shine upon her. And I pray for those family members and friends who will support her. I pray that you will give them a heart of understanding, a heart of love, a heart of empathy, so that they will always be there for us. Not just she, but the entire family. Oh God, the entire family. We are grateful for what you are going to be doing. We are grateful for the support. We are grateful for the love that you will show to them. In the name of Jesus Christ, from Nazareth, we pray. Amen and amen.
Withered and the flowers fall away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. For inasmuch as it had pleased Almighty God to call out from this life the soul of our dear brother, we therefore commit his body to the ground, dust to dust, ashes to ashes, and earth to earth. After labor comes rest. After struggled peace, after life fitful forever, this last sleep. What, man? Goodbye, I stay no longer with you. Goodbye, pleasures of peace. I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind.
Attention, please. Let us have our closing prayer as we conclude this session. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we are here, Father God, and we thank you for the weather that you're permitted to have given to us. We thank you for the cooperation and the overall operation of this proceeding. We ask, Father, that you give peace and strength and encouragement and even hope to those that are mourning at this time. We ask, Lord God, that you will have your mercy upon those that are here as they have to continue life with this memory and this event that has occurred. We thank you for your love and we thank you for your blessing. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let the peace of God be with you now, always and forever. Be within your homes and within your walls. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you miss me, don't go searching. If you don't find me, you know that I'm gone. If you don't hear from me, don't come out behind my door. I'll be gone. He has been making up now. If you miss me, don't come searching. If you don't find me, you know that I'm gone. If you don't hear from me, don't come
clouds rolled 